Hi, welcome to AnnalSmith.com. Today we're going to start getting into actual casting. I just plugged my pot in and it's going to take about 20 minutes to get up to temperature. And you can see I have old sprue plates in it, some uh, reject bullets. And over here I have some ingots, my plastic mallet, and my um, six cavity gang mold. I also have a, a spoon I use for scraping the, the dross off the top of the mix. Now over here I have my my soup can, mold soup can with I throw my rejects into. Now over here you can see I have a little bit of bullet lube. We're going to use that for flux. Then I have a box over here. In a box, in, in, inside the box, I have um, some old cotton t-shirts so when I drop the bullets out of the mold they don't um, hit a hard surface when they're being dropped and deformed because they're still kind of soft. Uh, even though they're solid when they're coming out, they can still be deformed. And over here, I got my gloves, my cotton BDU top, and a hat, and I'm wearing my goggles right now. So we're going to go ahead and let this come up to temperature and then we'll get to casting. Okay, now we got the, the alloy fairly well melted here. We want to add some more to it. And then we're going to flux it and we're going to skim off the dross. When you take like a new ingot that's cold, you want to set it on the side of your, um, your smelting pot here to let it warm up for minute or two and what this will do especially like if it's in the winter time um, these things can collect moisture just like a if you were to bring in a, um, a cold piece of metal from the outside the moisture can condensate on there if you drop it straight into the melting pot here what would happen is the uh, water would instantly evaporate so violently that the lead inside of here would come shooting out all over you so let those things stay on here for a little bit, just not to melt any water off of it. And allow them to go in and become part of the mix. It may take a minute or so for it to come to temperature and melt completely down. Uh, sometimes you see like right now we got some bubbles coming up. And you will notice that on the top here you'll see like little lumps and clumps of stuff in here and that's called dross. That's impurities inside the alloy itself. And what, what the dross is is usually like dirt or oxidation. And you want to get as much of that out of there as possible. And we're going to use um, this stuff here which is 50-50 beeswax and alex. This is standard bullet lube. I just take a little chunk of it and I stick it on the side of my reject can here. And you're going to roll up a little piece about the size of a pea and you're going to drop it on top of the lead, let it melt, and we're going to burn it. What that's going to do is it's going to help the, uh, the mix to clean itself and also help it flow through the spout down on the bottom. And once we start pouring, I'm going to re position the camera so you can see more what's happening. Okay. Now that the lead is melted, uh, those two ingots we put in there, we're going to start getting all the dross out of it. We'll take a little pinch. That's about the size you want, right there. Drop it in. And see it melt. What I do is I take a match let it burn maybe a little bit more. There we go. Oops, ouch. 
It'll start to smoke a little bit. Depends on how much crud you got in there, whether the wax will burn. And once you get it going, what you want to do is stir it. Like this. And you're going to take your spoon. Make sure, if you got an all steel spoon like this, make sure you got gloves on. Because the heat transmitter, you want to scrape the inside of the pot, right? Like that. And what this is going to do is get all the impurities and stuff that are clinging to the side of the pot to float to the surface. And throughout the casting process, what you're going to want to do is stir this. Because what can happen is if you have uh, an alloy mixed with tin, lead, and antimony, uh, it'll start to settle. And you want to mix it up pretty good so your mix, you're not pouring lead out the bottom and having your tin and antimony hovering on the top. See. Start scraping it just like this. Take it. And I have a crucible I just throw all this crud into. I've cast with um, just regular leather work gloves and I've found that the heat can get straight to your hands no matter what. So I went ahead and invested um, into the welding gloves and it's made a huge difference. It's made casting a lot less hazardous to me. Also, lead is dangerous so you want to have some ventilation. I have my garage door open. <clears throat> Let the lead out or let, let vapor out. Okay, so now this is to temperature. It's lid there. Now here's something else. On the lead production pot you'll see this is has a screw type set up on here. And what that does is you can take your spoon and go like that and turn it. And what it does it'll clean the spout on the bottom because sometimes you'll get carbon or dirt depending on what you're casting. Wheel weights is especially susceptible to getting crud in it. And just keep skimming all the yuck off the top. And as you're casting, what you're going to notice um, as you drop your sprues in here, uh, every time it splashes in it's going to cause a little bit of oxidation. So you're going to get some gray uh, material. Almost like if you take a, a cup of milk and put it in the microwave you have a little skin on the top. And that skin is just oxidation. What you do is you want to scrape it off. Because what it can cause is voids or inconsistent fills in your in your cavities. That's yeah, nice and hot. So here we got the mold. Now the mold needs to be brought to temperature. And the way we're going to do that is we're going to you can there's several ways of doing it, but this is how I do it. I take the mold in a sprue plate and I let it sit there. Let it sit there for about a minute. A big guy like this you want to sit in here for about a minute and a half. On a smaller two cavity mold <clears throat> you want it to sit in there for 40 seconds maybe. You don't want to get too hot because if it gets too hot what will happen is you'll um, when you put your cast when you start casting it'll actually flow between the two blocks and shoot out the bottom because it'll it'll be just as hot as the, um, the lead itself and you have to wait for it to cool. You can use a sponge to quench it a little bit to bring down the temperature. <clears throat> and what you'll notice here is I have the sprue plate in there because you want the sprue plate to be warm otherwise the lead will harden as soon as you, it hits the cold sprue plate and you won't get any lead inside your, um, in your cavity. And you notice it solidified since it hit. So I'm going to reposition the camera so you can see what happens during the cast.